What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Arch Check. So today I know you guys are going to be pretty excited because I got a pretty long video that I'm going to be putting up right here. Uh, probably around 40 minutes or so, but it's a great video. Trust me. It's going to be showing you all the steps and techniques that I use you know, for the basic sketches of a drawing. I'm going to be showing you uh, all the thoughts that go through my head, why I'm doing this, why I'm doing that. It's just going to be a great experience for you guys to really understand how I go about drawing images. So uh, check it out and I'm sure you guys will enjoy it. What's going on there everybody? Welcome back to the Art Shack. So today I'm going to be doing a uh, two sketches simultaneously and I'm going to be doing it in real time. Well, hopefully mostly in real time. I'm not sure yet. When I get it into the editing software I'll decide, but uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It'll probably be mostly in real time, but we'll see how these things go. So, first thing I'm going to do is divide the paper in half. And this will be picture one and then the bottom will be uh, picture two. But in the meantime, I'm just going to do a quick sketch up for the first one. And uh, I'm going to show you how to like block in areas uh, just to kind of show you how, how my general thought process is when I am making videos for YouTube. So this one, I kind of have the idea I want, you know, steep cliffs, stuff like that. So I mean, my initial thought is to just block in space and um, I'm thinking about how the ridge line of these cliffs are going to be looking so with that in mind that's kind of why I'm just sketching some rigid lines this is gonna be the top of the cliff area and I'm immediately thinking of volume you know how are, are these cliffs gonna be flat are they gonna be volumetric you know what what kind of lines are going in it and you know doing quick line work can depict you know what is going on in these mountains and you want this mountain to end with like a sharp peak you can curve this line out and then you, you know this will end on a very sharp cliff you can also do that around in here kind of bring this one out and have that come back and just have this line it's all about line the line will tell you where things are going so I'm using a 2H pencil by the way and for the initial sketch it doesn't really matter but don't use a pencil that's really really dark sometimes it's hard to uh, manipulate later on actually I really should be using a B or an HB for this so let me use that but like I was saying the line work is everything it's crucial in the very beginning you know it, it tells you what is happening in the image it doesn't have to be perfect but you you want to be able to know what is happening in the overall image. So I have one peak here, I can have it kind of curve in and then come back again, something like that. And then put a few more, see now this looks like it's really coming out and I can have a bit of a stronger line here kind of showing that that area is different from the rest. And then take the eraser, erase this part out. Just something like that. Now, uh, this is all going to be quick sketch work. It's not going to be like finished, polished work. Uh, I'm kind of giving you the nitty gritty of my mindset of where I come from, you know, when I'm drawing these um, polished landscapes. You know, my thought process before that even happens. There's always a plan in 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 mind, you know. Um, a lot of the the pictures that I have done for YouTube actually have a lot of sketches. Um, some, you know, most of the time it's just one. Just get my general ideas out there, just to kind of say, okay, I want to do this, I want to have that, and I want to have this here, or just general placement. And then after that, I'll usually get the bigger sketchbook out and do it in there, the finished drawing. So there's usually a plan in my, in my mind of what is going to happen. I usually don't go in it, you know, fully blank. Now this, on the other hand, I have looked up a couple references, but I have since turned them off. I am not looking at them anymore. I want the idea to be loose in my head, but I don't want my idea to be fully 
uh, depicted upon what I'm looking at. I want to see what I can do just with my own imagination. My own imagination. So I'm really trying to strengthen that area of my drawing ability. And a good way to do that is just drawing from what you remember. Now, of course, um, doing that for a final finished drawing is not always the best idea because it, it's gonna be hard for you to remember. You know, how, what's the details of a tree look like? What are the details of a cliff? What are the details of clouds? Unless you do it over and over and over again for a living, that will be very difficult for even the most experienced artists to do. So, but in this case, I am doing it for a sketch. So it doesn't really matter how it turns out because it's all loose, rough ideas that will later be translated into a more polished drawing. And this process is just to get the ideas out there. So it really, it doesn't matter at all how it turns out. It's just all rough work. And over here, I'm still blocking in space. I'm still not sure what I want to be happening in this image. All I know is that in this one, I have some cliffs going on and I'm gonna have this part you know be like a really really tall section or something something like this and it's gonna uh, this image kinda has some extreme um, what's the word <laughs> I'm losing it I'm talking about too many things and I can't remember what I'm doing here uh, uh, I'll think of it later, but it has some extreme angles and such, but it's the um, vanishing points. That's what I was thinking. The vanishing points and proportions are going to be a bit extreme in this. And uh, this section here, I'm going to have be its own, like, separate cliff face. Something along the lines of this. And you can see how quickly I'm working. I'm just trying to get some very, very rough ideas out there. I don't really care how it looks. I'm just trying to get the placement and ideas. But you know, this drawing may never make it to a finished drawing, but it's all practice. It's what it is. It's just getting your ideas out there. And the greatest thing about a sketchbook is that it's meant for you to just throw your ideas out there. You know, don't worry about the drawing looking great because the reality the reality is if you don't want anyone to see it, they don't have to see it. It's just for you. And if you don't, you know, draw whatever you think of it kind of limits your um, imagination for what you can kind of do. So, and I'm just trying to think of what I can do. Um, in the distance here, I can always just put in some really like rugged mountains or something. Maybe this one has a really tall peak, something like that. Yeah, it looks cool. You know, I, I, that's the other thing too. I draw what I think looks cool. I like these um, large landscapes that kind of have different points of interest in it. This one has some larger mountains in the background. I mean, these are seriously large compared to what is going on in here. And I'm keeping them rugged because I want to have um, I want to have symmetry within this piece. I want to keep things similar. You know, consistency is what I'm really looking for in words. I want to show consistency within a drawing. I don't want to have like an alien planet with no air and have lush greenery all over it. I mean you can do it but it doesn't make sense. So do what makes sense. This is gonna be probably... Uh, I can do this either way. This could be a very very dry area or I can make it lush greenery because these types of cliffs can exist in both places, but probably more along the lines of, uh, probably more like lush greenery, but I don't think I would depict it in this. I'm more interested in what I can do with these cliff faces here. And I'm still trying to think of what I can do in here, but I'm not, I haven't fully uh, figured that out yet. I could bring this cliff face over. That's something I can do. See, I kind of worked stuff out on the fly as well. So this could be its own thing. And then it can come over and join up with this. 
this is what I constantly do when I'm sketching. So I'm thinking of different ways, you know, how can objects interact with each, with each other? And then you just erase this out. Alright. But I hope that you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, if I show in some light, I'll shade this area in. This will all be shaded in. Something like that. I can have this all be part of that and make it its own thing. Maybe have some bigger rocks on top of here. You know, just something a little bit different. Have some more line work that brings it up into here. But this is the way I love to work. You know, just loose ideas and then you can always come back to it later on when you're looking for inspiration. So when you have that artist block or something and you're looking for something to do, you can always go back and see what you did in the past and be like, hey, you know, I, I like what I did here, but I have another idea. And then expand upon that idea. You know, like I was saying before, if you know you like this, but you want to see what it looks like with lush greenery, go for it. You know, it's you can always expand upon what you've done in the past. That's something that I like to challenge myself with. I'm always challenging myself when it comes to drawing. I always like to see, you know, what can I do better? What can I change? Um, what can I draw better? Can I shade something, make it look a little more dramatic? I'm always thinking, you know, what can I do? So I'm, I'm I always think of myself as a, an aspiring artist. I'm trying to think of ways to just better myself, better my skill, and the thing that I, I like about art is that I know that I don't know a lot about it. Um, I'm, I'm, don't get me wrong, I, I know quite a bit about different things, but I am in no sense of an expert in drawing. I, uh, I'm always looking to find new things, and the reality of it, if I was an expert in drawing, and if I knew everything, and I knew how to do it, and I was just absolutely great at it, I honestly think I'd get seriously bored because uh, knowing that you can do something perfect every single time, it kind of takes the fun out of it because you know the result. And the thing I, that I like about drawing is that it's you don't always know what the outcome is going to be, and it's always it keeps it exciting and and it just keeps you going. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking to myself, do I want these cliffs to be longer or what? And what do I want to do here? I'm thinking of a waterfall. If I have something coming over, you know, right here or something, if I have... That's what, I, that's what I'm thinking is just... And then, you know, what can I do? Because I, I don't really draw waterfalls too often. What can I do to make it look like a waterfall? Do I shade really darkly, really lightly? These are all things that I'm, I'm that are going in my mind that you know it's it's <laughs> i know some people probably think you're crazy you have way too many thoughts going through your mind right now but um working retail jobs and having people ask you questions every day uh especially about you know how do i do this how do i do that and do you have any ideas of how i can do it it forces you to be creative and and think outside the box so i'm i'm always asking these questions my brain does not shut off i'm telling you it does not stop so falling asleep at night for me is not easy. I'm always thinking, you know, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Um, to some people, I'm I'm crazy, which I probably wouldn't argue with you. <laughs> you would probably win that argument. So I am trying to do some like foam, not foam, mist or something at the bottom of this. And now I'm thinking, now now how do I make this waterfall fit with an environment? I have a waterfall, but what do I do? And what do I do around here? I'm just thinking, you know, I'm going to use the side of my pencil and just kind of make some irregular shapes or something. But then again, I want something so I know that there are like bigger rocks or something around here. So I was kind of trying to do it around over here, something like that. See, now I'm starting to like it. Um, even though it doesn't look like rocks, I can tell by the motion of my pencil and, you know, the line work that's down. I'll remember that they're, they are rocks. I mean, you, 
<laughs> the way it sounds, you don't always have to draw what you intend to draw, but if you know what it is that you're drawing, it's fine because it's only sketch work, so you know. Um, okay, so now I have that. Now I can kind of. So I'm just trying to think of how I can even say. All right, so I'm trying. I'm starting to get it, but I know that along rivers there's usually some big rocks and such, and I can use that to kind of shape how this river is going to look, and if I, I can have it kind of come around something like that, and maybe have. Now this rock, because of the way this is shaped, it's going to be very 3D. So I'm going to have this face and then this face over here. And then maybe have this come up a little more. Something like that. But I need to have the top come up. With. See, I'm, I'm always thinking of different things. You know, what, what do I have to do to make this work? What do I have to do to make that work? And now this cliff face isn't really working because of the way I have this river in. But, and then what can I do to fix that? I can easily kind of make like a river bank right here erase out these lines and then kind of work this in and kind of give a slight curve to it something like that you know just it's very very rough work and hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing with this And now the only thing I really left at was this cliff face over here, which really doesn't need a whole lot. And I've really neglected this cliff face back here, but that's not important because it's not a focal point. Actually, the focal point is right around here where I made this waterfall up here. Now, if I, if I show you this drawing, you, you, you may never pick up that this is a waterfall. But if you know when you look at it, it's a waterfall, then you did just perfect. You did fine. If if you can recognize it as what it is intended for you then you're doing everything exactly correct because like I said this is all sketch work and if I have the light coming in this way this mountain will have some shading something along like that but I want to keep this mountain light because it's really far in the back because of atmospheric perspective the light particles in the air uh, well not light particles the water um, vapor that's naturally in the air distorts light as it passes through it it spreads light in all different directions and it does the same exact thing to light so when light passes through water or when color passes through uh, different water vapors and such it spreads and disperses that color so when you look at a distant object it will look blue because there's the sky is blue or depending upon what color the sky is there's a lot of blue in the sky and it interacts with the water vapor and it's a whole grand spiel but that's pretty much why distant objects look blue it's because the blue sky is interacting with that water vapor and it's coming through to your eye and then it makes it look blue but it's it's a very very um, it's simple in theory but when you get into it there's a lot to it so it can be kind of daunting to really grasp your mind and wrap your mind around what is actually happening. But just keep in mind that the general theory is that the further an object is, the more blue or whatever the color the sky may be, that is the color that they usually take um, in place of their original colors. They'll still have the original color in it, but not nearly as much. So that's why I, and the same thing happens with detail. You, you won't see an object as detailed in the distance. So that's what I'm doing with there. So this drawing, I'm just going to quickly do something with this cliff face. I don't know what at this point. I don't really care because it's not really a focal point. So I can kind of leave it unfinished and the image will still read as what I have intended it to do. And I'm going to shift the page. This part I'm probably going to um, speed through. But uh, I have this thought, I'm gonna, I want to do like a cave. Now I don't really draw caves, but um, I'm just going to go for it. So uh, I love the caves where, see I just want to kind of get quick motion going through in here. I want to show like these rocky roof cavern things, but I want to have like a pillar. That's the only thing I know I want is a pillar. 
because pillars are cool. And then over here, I can kind of see. I can kind of do the same thing in here. It's it's similar, but it's very different. I know that make, doesn't make sense, but I I have cliff faces that will show up in here as well, and I'm blocking in shapes really quickly here. See that that doesn't work. It's too. I, I'm always thinking, you know, is that too close to the bottom? You know, will that read? But um, uh, if it was an image, I'd probably crop. I was thinking to have this line go and then have like a cliff right here, but I'd rather have this go all the way over to here and have this, you know, be consistency. Um, I know when you guys see this video, you're gonna be like, "Man, that guy's crazy. He, he doesn't shut up." <laughs> but it's just, it's I'm speaking my mind as I'm drawing, and I know a lot of you will appreciate that because to get into the mind of an artist is very hard to do, especially for those artists that are long past deceased. You know, to get in their mind and and know what they were thinking as they were making their art. That's a dream a lot of people wish they can possibly do, but it's just not possible. And I can have... See, I want to have this end here, something like that. And... I know I want some more roof cavern stuff over here. So I want to have this be like the major ending point of here. So I'm going to make this line heavy. So I know that this is like an ending point for what is going on here. I can actually make this pillar a bit thicker, but I don't think that really matters. You get the idea of what's going on here. I can make this line. I, I want to make this pillar very, very volumetric as well. So I ha if I have some you know, rocky stuff going on over here, something like that. But I also want to have another pillar somewhere over here and with this jagged line I just made I know I can follow that and kinda have it follow something along the lines of like that something like that then like that I have another pillar and all this is gonna be like up here these big cliffs I'm going to have all this just go into a void. A black void. And again, I'm going to have, you know, this area come out. Something like that. And like that. Just something interesting. I'm going to have all this be like cliff going down. Now, and here's other things you can think of. You know, there could be a flowing river going through here. It can just be a gap that where lava comes up. Or it can just be a hole. A hole where if you step down, you're screwed. Because you ain't coming back up. So. Something like that. And I want to make heavy lines you know, where where these are their own like cliff face. I want to make some heavy lines. That way I can see it later. I can have another one right here. Make its own little cliff face. See, same thing over here. Make some heavy lines where those peaks are. So that way you know for later when you come back. Just something like that. And I can detail this guy. Alright, so just have this. And then I'm thinking, you know, these roofs are, or ceiling, or whatever you want to call it, they're kind of smooth. I can have one of them come and have some, like, really sharp spikes or something coming down. You know, you, you can, by doing that, you can make this place be like, ooh, that, you know, this is kind of dangerous. You know, if that thing falls, uh, it can really do some serious damage. So, you can have something like that, and maybe a few smaller ones up over here. But, you want to keep the main focus, you know, it's going to be right around in here. That's what I haven't even, notice I haven't even touched over here. I don't know what's going to go here, but the fact of the matter is I don't really care, because um, I don't plan to have this area over here to be anything of interest. So, I may just kind of have it, I don't know, something... I can have the ceiling look like it's getting larger over here or something. 
See, I don't know, because I don't really care about this area. And when this draw is finished, when it becomes a finished piece, um, that area I will probably not really focus on because I don't, I've never really planned for it to be anything of use or attention. The big attention is, you know, in here in the cliffs because that, you know, that's a big focus point. I want then this in here, I have a kind of a natural circle being formed or oval being formed right there. So your eye will kind of go right into there. So I can put something of focus in here. I can put like little figures or something, you know, that are traversing through the cave trying to get out or whatever. I'm always just trying to think, you know, what can go here? Why would it go there? What would happen? What are these, you know, if there's people in here, why are they in here? They probably chose to go through here uh, versus going over a mountain or uh, thinking in video games. Maybe there's a quest you have to go in here for some reason or just something. Or maybe they just went in here because they thought it'd be fun. I don't know. You just, you just kind of have to think about these things. There's always a reason behind why certain things are done. But I can have some more cliff faces over here. And then back here I can maybe have some rocky formations of some sort. I don't know. Just something. And have the ceiling keep getting lower and lower. But again, I want to have this line be slightly heavier. To show that this is its own sort of level of space, so to speak. Same with over here. Same with this line. So these are kind of major lines because they have some major focus points here. Same with this line. I want to have this be like a major rock formation that goes into this pillar something like that and then you can always put in some you know rough pencil marks in here to indicate that it's rough terrain you can kinda of put some jagged lines in here but don't overdo it you, you kinda of just wanna get the idea you know that this this area you don't wanna screw around in you know And it looks like my camera is about to run out of battery. So if that happens, I'll just replace them and keep going. Still haven't really figured out what I want to do over here. Uh, I can have another pillar. Something right over here. Something. I think I'll do that. Just kind of have a bigger one. Or maybe... I have an idea. I got the ideas. See, I don't want to have a pillar end over here because that'll bring attention over here and I don't want that there. So instead, I'm going to have a pillar that ends right on the corner of this image. That way any any attention over here will be bounced right back into the middle. So I'll have another pillar that is over here. And I want to push it into the background. So I'll have this space kind of go over where that's gonna be and something like that so hopefully you can kinda get a good idea of what I'm trying to do here And I'm using the uh, paintbrush to clean away any eraser shavings that I have. See, now it's starting to become like a nice cavern. Something cool. I think my camera's gonna die here any second. 
Alright, so my batteries did die, but I, I changed them, so it should be all good now. Hopefully these batteries are charged. Now, just to kind of put things into perspective, my camera is, it takes four AA batteries. So you can either go through a lot of AA batteries or get a lot of rechargeable ones, so that's what I do. I have a lot of rechargeable batteries for my camera. I have four sets, and it takes four batteries, four AA's. So I have four sets of those, so it's like 16 batteries that I use. You kind of need them, so, so that's what happened. All right, so this drawing, it's um, kind of coming to an end. It's uh, it's kind of like, you know, what do I do here? What do I do there? You know, what, what, what can I do to make this look cooler than it already is, you know, sort of thing. And the other thing you got to think of is where is the light source in this place? You can kind of make it really cool. Maybe have a figure standing right here and have him holding a torch. And you can have a really dramatic lighting, you know, everything around be really black except for his immediate area, which is intensely bright. That's something that's pretty cool. Or maybe where um, I'm actually drawing this from, maybe there's a light source behind me. So there's going to be a lot of light on, you know, this face, this face, uh, and things like that. And, you know, all in here. And even these will be lit up slightly. But everything behind it is going to be very, very dark. You know, these are just things that I keep thinking about. I could have more cliff faces over in here. But I'm not too worried about this area right now because I have quite a bit of it done. I'm going to bring this over. Have it be part of that. Still have some more cliff right here. But I'm pretty much going to have this cliff ending right around somewhere in here. It's still going to be there, but because of the way you're looking, you won't be able to tell that anymore. Yeah, maybe I can have this cavern ending kind of over here. I can have this be one of those dark lines showing an end of that. And then I can have another one kind of over here interacting with the environment. And I can keep kind of keep that going just a little bit longer and have like a very, very tight screw hole over here or something. I can kind of make this place look like a maze almost. But I was thinking even back here that I can have some walls or something. Just something to show an end of this place, you know, an end of the madness of this cave or cavern. But you can kind of see how I came into this with a simple idea. You know, although this isn't the best drawing you've ever seen me do, and it's exactly my intent. Um, but you can kind of see how I came into this with just knowing I wanted a cave, I wanted some pillars, and I wasn't sure how to really do that. But just by doing it and kind of experimenting, you know, how does this look, how does that look compared with everything else? You know, if I want to add in a new element such as a waterfall like it did up here, well, how would that interact with everything else that I already have? You know, just kind of like different things. And I'm kind of working on this one again because um, I, I noticed that this line is bothering me, and that's the line of the the end of the water here and the land being here and I don't like that line because it doesn't look like it should be there in nature so an easy way to cover that up is you know I know that there's gonna be rocks here so I can put a rock right here and just kinda have that rock live right here and it'll cover up that line and it'll you know it give you a reason to not have that line and not have it look so you know why is that line there and it doesn't look right I don't like it so change it something you know Just like that. But um, back to this one. I'm going to shade a little bit, something like that. Some Something here. I don't know, I'm just kind of... I've never really drawn a cavern before, but like I said, I, I came into it only knowing that I wanted pillars, some death spikes of sorts, or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> and uh, that's all I knew I wanted, and, and that's what I came into it doing. And just knowing a little bit about, you know, like proportion. Actually, I know a lot of you have been asking about me about proportion. Eh, proportion um, and, and how it relates to, to the landscape. But um, it's kind of hard to really explain how I do it. it I don't know. 
I'm, I've been really trying to think of how can I really thoroughly explain how to make things look like they're receding into the background. Well, one good way is to know your vanishing points. If you kind of get the general idea of how vanishing points sort of work, um, or perspective rather, you can manipulate the landscapes, or anything for the matter, uh, in your favor and kind of portray what you want and you can make these worlds of sorts you know the way that you intended for them to be and have them look the way that you wanted them to look without having a building that's gonna look like it's gonna fall down a mountain or something because it it's not in proportion and when you draw more and more you'll notice when things look wrong because like I said before, when you have a building that looks like it's going to fall off the face of a mountain, you know that you, uh, the angles on that building you did are wrong. And uh, then you just got to kind of look to see how you can change it. Now, um, although I kind of know things about proportion and vanishing points and whatnot, I really have not like fully like studied them to the point where I know like everything about them. I know one point perspective and two point perspective and some some points of three point perspective. But when you get to more perspective than that, I'm like, I don't even know how to start. I don't even know how to do that. It's just confusing. I don't even want to deal with it. But I know one of these days I'm going to have to actually dissect it and learn it, you know, front to back. And, and that way I can be able to teach you guys thoroughly, you know, what's going on. But uh, I've, I've always just kind of worked around it, you know, not really having to know what's actually going on. Which, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, and I was just thinking right over here, I can kind of have some light coming through, so I can have a race out, something, I don't know, maybe show some light rays or something coming through here, just an idea, I don't know how it's going to look. Actually, it looks pretty cool. I can have some light, and I, I want this to be the focus point anyway, so I can have some light coming through, something like that. I don't know, just an idea. I can have that be the end of the cave. But like I said, I'm I'm very very kind of spontaneous when I'm drawing these landscapes. You know, what what can I do? How, how does this work? How does this work in relationship to that? I know it I hope that you guys by watching this aren't turned off by drawing because of how complex it can be. But believe me, it's problem solving. What in this world or what kind of job can you find that doesn't involve problem solving? If it doesn't involve problem solving, <laughs> I don't know what kind of job it would be. I don't know if I want to be a part of that job, to be honest. But I, it's good for your brain, you know, you, you just kind of working out problems. And that's what we're meant to do, you know, we're problem solvers. And when you can solve a problem, you can usually make a job out of solving a problem. In some cases, you know, depending upon how often that solution is needed. But, in any case... Um, that, that's one of the reasons why I love drawing is because uh, drawing landscapes like this are very, very extreme. You know, they're very extreme places, but uh, it's just I have a lot of fun with it because it, you know, it's it's unknown. You know, I've never been to a place like this, but yet I'm kind of able to draw it or perceive on what I think it would be because um, of just taking general design principles and applying it to something I don't know. I mean, granted, this may not be 100% uh, accurate, but in my mind, it is perfectly fine, because I'm the creator, of course, but, you know, I've, this is something that I created, and in my mind, this is correct, but uh, in your mind, you know, you may say, you know, this doesn't make sense at all, which is perfectly fine, and that's the beauty of being an artist, you know, you're always entitled to your own styles and, you know, the way that you want to do things. You don't always have to follow what everyone else does, and that's the same thing with me. I don't usually follow, you know, every what everyone says as truth or you know law or what whatever it should be. I kind of take any advice I get along the way kind of lightly, depending upon what it is. But most of the time, I take, you know, when I watch a drawing video or something or what compliments or s what people suggest to me, I take them lightly, um, not because I don't care, but because I don't want it to seriously influence what I do. Uh, I, I like kind of keeping things original and my, my own my own style and whatnot and taking things lightly you know they're there but you don't have to go by them by the book you can keep them lightly but it's not law it's not you know if you don't do it you you know, you're never gonna be successful and you know that sort of thing uh, you, you kinda keep your own taste in things 
but at the same time you can still always take in other influences that you've had in your life experiences so and again with this one you know I have a lot of detail notice how much detail I have right here as compared to or actually in this general area as compared to up here see I have nothing done up here but it translates you know this area is not important it's just part of this thing and it's probably going to end up doing something along the lines of this which I don't know but to be honest I don't really care how that looks because it's not my focus this can have goblins dancing around it and I wouldn't really care because it's not my focus I don't know how goblins would be dancing around the ceiling but okay um, just again my crazy mind just throwing ideas out there but um, th I know this video is getting pretty long but um, I, I know that I I've expressed quite a few important details within this video and some pretty cool drawings here to show for it too which you know I think they look cool you guys might think they look terrible but the, you know uh, I, I hope you guys don't think they're terrible but th again these are just sketches ideas just to kind of get them out and it's good to do you know, just kinda express your ideas just be creative be yourself you know take other influences uh, and criticisms you know lightly keep them there just as guidance that's the, a good word for it use it as guidance but not as like religious or, or law or whatnot just keep it there as guidance use it there for your own morals and, and you can decide whether or not it deserves your full attention full attention or not and you know just be smart about things you will be the overall decider of whether or not you need that or not. But it's all up to you. Alright everyone, I want to thank you all very much for taking the time to check out this video. I have three more videos up on the screen. Last week's video, I show you all the supplies I use in my drawings. The one beneath that is Atmospheric Perspective. I kind of go back in depth and show you how to make objects look like they're receding into the background. I touch base with it in this video here. And the last video is a very popular video of mine, or it's getting very popular. It's called Mountains in the Mist. It's got a lot of great reviews on it, so check that one out, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And the two images on the screen, those are images that I've been drawing during live hangouts that I've been doing on my channel. So hopefully you get a chance to uh, tune into those, because those have been pretty fun. Alright everyone, uh, if you have any questions about anything I've done, feel free to post it. And please subscribe, and I will see you all laters.